This is a three by four foot linen canvas and I'm using oil paints today. So I'm just going to uh, talk over this video and uh, explain a few procedures I use to create this. Now I've toned this canvas with a uh, combination of burnt sienna and a little bit of burnt umber. And I almost always do this, especially on larger pieces, to get rid of that white. It makes it easier to compare colors a little bit further on and compare values, I should say. Uh, also, being a landscape such, such as it is, a lot of this brown color will show through the final painting. And of course, in landscape, uh, you're naturally going to have a lot of this brown earth. So it really gives a warmth to the painting right off the bat, right to start with. So it's, it's very helpful. Also helps to maintain an overall harmony with a painting like this. I'm just using a brush to lay out the composition. And I do have some reference photos that I'm using for this painting. And uh, they're on my monitor just to my right. Uh, and generally, I'll use several different reference photos because I can never really find one that has just everything I want. So I often use a combination of reference photos to get a little bit of information here and a little bit there and uh, finally come up with a composition. And these compositions are quite simple, so I don't need a lot of brush work to begin with here. I frequently step back from my canvas and give this a little bit of a consideration, a little bit of thought before I continue. After I get what I think is an okay composition, only then will I start to block in these areas, these large masses with more solid values. And I'm not worried about the color at all at this point. I'm just worried about the composition and the values. And the values, of course, meaning the darks and the lights. And at this point, I'm using very thin paint. These are oil paints. I don't want to, uh, at least my procedure is, I, I work from thin to thick. I only have a couple of colors out on my palette right now, so I'm reaching in and I'm getting some uh, a dark green, probably an olive green or something similar to that. Now I'm just going to mix that with some of the uh, burnt umber, just to give it a, a bit of a greener look. I'm holding my brush on my side and just scraping that around, and that works quite quickly. If these paints seem a little thick, I just dip into my mineral spirits in that little cup down there, and I can thin the paint. I use the mineral spirits, they, they dry quick, and so that it works out fine for me. Uh, if a little further on, I will probably put out some liquid, which uh, helps to dry the paint much more quickly. So once the paint starts to get thick, I'll use some liquid with that. And then by the next day, uh, the paint will be dry enough to go over again. I generally put out all my paints at the same time. I'm not sure why, but here I'm just putting out some paints as I, as I need them. I just put out some cerulean blue, and now I'm blocking in this area where the water is. And here again, this is very thin paint, because this is just a block in, just laying in the values and just sort of working out in my mind what this is all going to look like. This block in just continues, and this is a very quick part of the painting. Really, this doesn't take much time at all to fill in all these areas. It's later on when I start refining the painting and getting in more details. That takes a lot more consideration, or a lot more time, I should say. Right now, this is just a very large block into the areas where I think they should go. You may have noticed I haven't used any white so far, and this is uh, very important to me because as soon as I add white, things start to become chalky, and 
I lose the richness of the painting. So I generally, almost always, start with my transparent colors and my dark colors, and I stay away from the whites for quite a while. Now that most of these areas have been covered, not all of them, but most of them, now I can start to put in the smaller shapes over these larger areas. It's important for me not to lose the large area with so many small shapes that it competes with those large areas, but I want all these smaller shapes within the large area. This thin wash of paints underneath dries pretty quickly, so now I start using more and more paint, a little bit heavier applications of paint. And of course that becomes uh, more dense, more opaque, and less of that burnt sienna background shows through. But some of that is always going to show through. You can see that quite clearly in, uh, in this painting already, even in the green areas. Now until I get into the detail, I really try and hold my brush kind of at arm's length. I don't hold it down close to the furl. And this way I can more easily swing my arm and my hand in the direction I want it to go. And of course I keep referencing my photographs all the time. There is a point that I leave the photographs behind and then just work on the painting. I hardly ever use a really large brush. I know some artists do, but that's not really my style. Even on a large canvas like this, I will hardly ever use a brush over one inch. I step back often to take a quick look. I think even at this stage of the painting, I have not picked up any white. So I've stayed away from white for quite a while on this. I'm just putting in my darks first. That, uh, that area up there towards the top where you can see a lot of that burnt sienna, that's probably going to be a lot of sky. So I'm just sort of leaving that alone for right now. This is a real fun part of the painting. This is where I start adding the river rocks. I'm adding more branches to these tree trunks because that will give me a guide and roadmap as to where I'm going to put my negative areas of the sky. So I can Put in a lot of these branches, which of course a lot of them are there in the woods. And then I can paint between those branches and put in my negative areas of sky. I much prefer this than to paint in a large area of sky and then paint my branches over the sky. For a couple of reasons. One, it just gives a more painterly look, in my opinion. And the other reason is, if I were to paint this sky in a light color, and I tried to paint branches over it, those dark colors would mix with the white almost immediately, and I wouldn't maintain this rich dark color, and these rich dark colors of these branches. But now it's time to pick up the uh, white and the lighter colors having put in all these darks that need to be put in. So I'm using titanium white here and I'm using it thin, again, just sort of laying it in. I don't want to use pure white because I want to maintain those pure white accents for when I almost finish the painting. So even though this looks white here, it's probably mixed with uh, either some burnt umber, ultramarine blue to gray it down, or maybe even some black. Uh, and also being thin as it is, a lot of that 
darker color is showing through the lighter areas. So I'm just carefully laying this in. And now I'm moving up to the sky, putting these negative areas. And since I have placed in all those branches, now I can just paint between the branches and create a nice painterly look. That doesn't mean I can't go over this light area with more branches, which I probably will do. But for right now, I'm just painting between the branches that I've put in there with those dark values. I try and keep these shapes varied. I want some of them to be small, some of them to be large, but I want a variety of shapes up here to keep the painting interesting. I'll be adding, <coughs> I'll be adding more sky holes up in this area as I go along, but I wanted the main area of this sky to show through in this one area. I didn't want to put sky holes evenly across the whole top of that canvas. I wanted to sort of focus it in the one area. And I'm moving down now with some opaque colors and I'm beginning to lighten those green areas. Also painting those green areas between the limbs that I painted earlier. I think I've done maybe a couple dozen of these large three by four foot mountain paintings with a stream and I'll take a minute here or two to show you a few of those. I continue to add greens, trying to get a variety of different greens. Some cooler, some warmer, 
by using uh, cerulean blue, Indian yellow, uh, ultramarine blue, and actually the introduction of some red within those greens. Often if I'm stuck trying to get some good variations of a green, I can put red in the green. And that will not only tone it down and neutralize it some, but give a nice variation of these greens. This is where the painting process really begins to slow down and more consideration has to be taken for each part of the painting. Now that thinner part of the water I worked on earlier can now be gone over with thicker paint and I'm going to lighten that up as well. Still not pure white here, even though it looks it on this video, I, I think. But I'm going to reserve my pure whites and my brightest colors almost for the last thing I do. Just refining the areas of the water. Most like the sky, I'm trying to keep all these little areas varied so they have an interest. And I'm just using a light touch of the brush here. Here towards the bottom of the canvas, this will be a more intense dark blue. And the reason is because when I'm looking down at the water, I'm seeing more reflection of the sky directly above me. As I look towards the back, towards the horizon, the reflection of the water back there would be more of a uh, reflection from the sky in the distance. So it's always darker, darker blues in the zenith of the sky directly overhead. As you look towards the horizon, generally gets lighter and lighter. But if you look straight up into the sky, it's always a, a brilliant blue. So looking down into this area of water, you would be seeing the reflection from the sky right above. So that's the reason this is a, a darker blue right down here towards the foreground. Now I guess that's probably not always the case, but generally I think that runs true. Uh, I, I mean, it would be different here if there were a lot of rapids and other things in the water down there. Of course, if there were rapids down there, it's going to be lighter. I'm expanding on this creek here and adding some little rivlets of water running here and there between the rocks. And I've added some lighter blue down there, which would represent some, some foam or water running past. And up here, Towards the top, I'm adding some patches of sunlight with some warm yellow ochre colors. I'm continuing with these warmer colors on the sides of the trees where the sunlight might be coming through the leaves and branches and hitting the trunks. This really starts to give some interest and form to the painting. I jump around from area to area very frequently. It's just a touch or two here, a touch or two there, jump up to the sky, back down to the water, and so on. What I try to accomplish is to finish the painting all at the same time. I don't want to finish w totally one part of the painting and then move and f totally finish another part of the painting. I want to be able to stop at any one point and say that the painting is finished to that point. So that's why I keep jumping around here. It just, uh, it helps me. Now I do know some artists that can start and finish a painting from one corner down to the other corner, completely with details and all, but that's not my, <laughs> not how my, brain works, so I have to work the painting in an overall fashion. 
For instance, here I'll jump up to the sky and start refining these areas. Now, dark colors can be thinner on the canvas. Light colors should be thicker and heavier. Now, I'm not exactly sure how I can explain that, but the light areas of the painting, like the sky, should, in my opinion, always have thicker applications of paint. The darker areas of the canvas don't necessarily need those heavy applications of paint. I'm expanding this large area of sky now, and I'm going to put more sky holes across the other parts of the painting. But I'll still keep that larger area of sky as the uh, largest area, and just sort of echo these other small areas of sky coming through. I want these trees to look very dense, so I'm not adding a lot of sky holes throughout the painting. Now since I have all these darks underneath, I can continue on and add my lights on top of that. And as I continue, I also make these colors more brilliant. So I go from dark to light, and I also sort of try and go from dull to brilliant. And of course, anything in the near foreground will be more brilliant and have more contrast. It'll have more intense color in the foreground than in the background. The application of this paint right here is quite a bit thicker than what I've been applying before, with the exception of the sky, which is pretty thick. So any of these light areas, again, I use thicker paint. So I'm putting quite a bit of that on my brush, just touching it to the canvas, lifting up my brush, and leaving that, that spot of paint on there. I'm not hitting that very hard with the brush. If I were to do that, it would mix with that wet paint underneath, and I'd lose that intensity of that brilliant green. Harmony is a very important part of a painting like this. So it's basically a green painting with a very warm undertone to it. So here I'm adding some uh, lighter areas to the trees, maybe not with intense light on them, so they're just sort of a lighter greenish gray brown. The further along I get with this painting, the less obvious it is as to what's been done. Because it's just little things right now that uh, are, are making the difference. The big areas are the most important after those were put in. It's just these little things that uh, help to refine the painting and, and bring it to a finish. I'm adding a touch of color here and there, just to vary these greens even more. So this is almost pure cerulean blue, and I'm just touching it here and there between these limbs. So what I'm trying to do is just make a lot of variations in this background area. Yet I'm trying to keep the whole overall look. I'm adding a few more trunks back here to break up this area. But instead of making these real dark, I'm changing pace a little bit and making these tree trunks lighter. This is getting down to some finer detail, although overall the painting is, is quite loose. And I'm adding a lot of warm areas up here, just where that sun is shining through, where the sky is shining through and hitting these branches and tree trunks. Trying to give it a little bit more warmth than it has already. Now this area here is in the very foreground of the, the piece. So these colors are much more intense and I've got a lot more contrast here in the foreground. The 
These are just rather large, broad strokes with the brush, just loading my brush up, laying that down there, tapping that on, and trying to vary these colors from warm greens to cooler greens. Getting close to finishing this piece, so everything that I do from here on out is done with some consideration. I don't want to overdo it. Once a painting gets to this point, it's easy just with a few strokes to go backwards and, and sort of destroy what has already been done. So it's a real learning curve to know what your abilities are and when to stop. I think it's always a little more important for me to stop a little sooner than it is too late. If I keep going with a painting and exceed the limits of my ability, then the painting starts to get worse rather than better. And that's a really difficult thing to know when that is. Well, I think that will finish this painting. Thanks for watching. <laughs>